Hey guys and welcome back. I hope you have all had a fantastic month. It is the end of May which means, as usual, it is time for me to tell you what I have been loving this month from my beauty stash and other things. I actually haven't been wearing a lot of makeup this month. If you guys follow me on Twitter or watched any of my previous videos about moving house, you might not know I've been moving house this month. Well, I have moved. This is my new background. Um, I am going to be doing a tour very soon. So if you guys want to see my new kind of filming setup slash office, I have an office. It's very exciting. Um, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and it will be up probably the next video after this one. Anyway, I haven't been wearing a huge amount of makeup this month, as I said, so I don't have a lot of makeup favourites. I do have quite a few bits and pieces, skincare, fragrance, and then a few like random favourites at the end. I don't normally do random favourites, but there have been a few things this month that really deserve to be in this video. Without further ado, makeup favourites that I've been loving this month, there are two things. The first one is a foundation, Illa Masca's Skin Base. This... <laughs> Mike just danced past the window and made me laugh. I'm sorry about that. Illamasca's Skin Base. This is somewhat of a controversial foundation, I think. I Instagrammed a picture of it asking you guys if you'd tried it. And some people love it, some people hate it. I get the feeling that for oily skin, this isn't a good one. But for me, I have very kind of normal to dry skin. At the moment, my skin is kind of normal, a little bit dehydrated probably, I don't have any dry patches or anything though, so um, for normal to dry skin I would say this is a good foundation, it is high coverage, it leaves you with a very kind of flawless finish, like I find it's perfect if I want to film or if I'm having photos taken, things like that, it just looks really like immaculate. It is quite a glowy finish so if you like your matte foundations then maybe this wouldn't be for you, I however do not like matte foundations at all, it's just not really my kind of um, preference to have matte skin um, because I, I think it's because I've never had oily skin really but anyway Illamasqua Skin Base I really like this it's not cheap it's a high-end foundation but it is really really good and it lasts all day as well it also mixes very well with other colors the last few days in the UK have been really sunny so I've got a little bit more color in my face and this is getting a little bit light for me so I have been mixing it with a few other of my kind of summer colour foundations and it is really good and really nice to mix if you want a lighter coverage from this or to change the colour slightly um, it mixes really nice, I've mixed it with Bourjois Healthy Mix and um, Urban Decay's Naked Foundation and both worked really well. Next makeup product is a mascara, it is the L'Oreal Telescopic Shocking Extensions Mascara which I picked up when I was in New York last month. Um, I've done a full blog post slash review type thing on my blog, if you guys want to check that out I'll put a link in the info bar below. Um, for like full close-up pictures and stuff like that. I really really like this mascara It's kind of like the best of both worlds lengthening volumizing it has a rubber brush But it is actually it's got quite wide teeth for a rubber brush So it tends to be like a little bit more fluttery sometimes when you get um, Rubber brush mascaras I find they're a little bit too defined like a little bit too perfect So I like my lashes to look a bit more kind of full and fluttery um, and light rather than that like really like stiff defined look. If you guys understand what I'm talking about, I don't know if that even makes sense. Either way, this stuff is really, really good. It is out in the States. I'm not sure if it's out in the UK yet. I haven't had the chance to look. If you guys know, let me know in the comment section below um, if you can get it in the UK because it is lovely and I have not used a telescopic foundation in a very, very long time. I'd forgotten how great they are. Um, yeah. Love this. Love this. Love this. Um, next up I have a kind of makeup skincare hybrid product. It is the Ole Henriksen Perfect Truth CC Eye Cream. This isn't actually out yet. I got a sample in this little pot, hence I have a sample pot instead of the actual thing. Um, however, it is amazing and when it does come out I would thoroughly recommend it to anyone that likes to wear kind of like natural, no fuss makeup day to day. This is an eye cream, but it does have coverage in it as well. It has a slight kind of pinky tone to really brighten up underneath your eyes. It's really moisturizing, but it's not heavy. I just find it's a really, really good eye cream. I'll definitely be buying the full size when I run out of the sample. Um, it's a perfect thing if you're going for like no makeup makeup day, if you pair it with a tinted moisturizer or as I presume it was intended with a CC cream. Um, I've never, kind of fallen into the whole CC BB cream obsession. I've always just stuck with normal tinted moisturizers. That's a whole other story. But this is really lovely if you combine it with a tinted moisturizer just for day to day wear. It won't get rid of the darkest of dark circles. It's not like a full coverage concealer, but it's really nice for just brightening up your eye area if you don't want to wear makeup, essentially. So love that. 
The next two things are skincare based. The first one, I think this was in my last monthly favourites, but it deserves another mention because I've been using it every night. It's been on my bedside table. I have had the driest hands, I don't know what it is about boxes, cardboard boxes and moving house. I think it's the dust as well. It just gives you the most like horrible feeling skin. It's not necessarily dry, like dry patches, but it's like dirty, dusty. I just feel like I want to wash my face every like half an hour. I've been so. using this on my hands to kind of get rid of that horrible feeling. Even after you wash them, it's still there. So I've been loving that. And then the other thing that I've been using all the time is the Weleda. I don't know if it's Veleda, Weleda, Weleda, however you say this. Let me know in the comments below. Um, skin food. This is kind of a cult product. I've heard so much about this. Apparently Victoria Beckham uses it's it. basically one of those multitasking elbows, knees and toes dry patches type product like Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour but it's more of a thick cream consistency rather than that like really kind of greasy oil it dries to a very kind of soft nice finish it's great to use any on anywhere that's dry I have been really liking using it like on my knuckles on my elbows knees and I really like it even on my face I've actually been doing my um Borghese Fango mask to get kind of rid of any clogs or blockages or blackheads in my skin and then using this over the top before I go to bed and it just leaves your skin really baby soft and moisturised so love this and will definitely be purchasing um, the full size if they do I don't know if they sell these 10mm ones but they're a really useful size to buy them in for your handbag and stuff for hair care there has been one product this month that I have totally been obsessed with it's the L'Oreal Everiche No Sulfates Nourishing Care System um, Intense Mask L'Oreal actually sent me this whole line and I'm not being paid, I'm not sponsored, whatever, it's not, they're not expensive products. Um, and I tried out the shampoo and conditioner, they're pretty average, I probably wouldn't buy them again. Good, but just, you know, not amazing. This, however, is totally amazing. It gives you the softest hair in the whole entire world. Um, it just feels really lovely, Sm it actually smells great as well. I'm not sure about the whole no sulfates nourishing thing because it definitely has silicones in it. I was looking on the ingredients. Apart from that, like to be honest with hair care, I'm never that bothered about silicones and things like that because if it makes my hair look good and if you use a good cleansing shampoo every week or so, I don't find it causes a problem. I have very dry hair and this stuff is great for me. It just, yeah, is is good. It's good stuff and I would definitely recommend it um, if you have dry hair or if you colour your hair and it's kind of dehydrated. It just makes it feel that really soft like all the way to the end, um, really like that a lot. Other body stuff that I've been loving, Saint Tropez mousse, I actually haven't used Saint Tropez in a really really long time and I used it again for the first time this month um, and it's just so good, I forget how good it when is. When it comes to fake tan I'm always lured in by different brands because it takes me so long to get through a bottle because I don't fake tan all year round, I just do it kind of if I'm going to a special occasion or in the summer. I had forgotten how great this stuff is, like seriously, it lasted a week until it started fading, two weeks and still it was like totally gone and it just, no streaks, it didn't leave me with any like dodgy orange elbows or anything and yes, easy to apply because it's a mousse, I love this stuff and I'm definitely like converted back. I used to use it before I started doing YouTube videos, I used to use this stuff and then when I started doing YouTube videos I felt like I'm testing things out constantly and I've rediscovered this, it's just the best fake tan. Anyway. Last kind of beauty related product is a perfume, it's my Vera Wang Love Struck. I've had this for a very long time, I got it when it very very first came out and I wore it every day for probably three months. Used up over half the bottle and then haven't used it again, I probably haven't worn this in over a year. Um, oh, it smells so good and when I was moving house obviously I kind of packed everything up. This kind of, it, because it's a big bottle and it's really pretty, it kind of stands at the back of my perfume collection and I forgot about it, I forgot how great it was. I've been wearing it like every single day since I moved house, I used it like on the first day we moved in, I was like oh my god this is great. It stays all day, no joke, it's the kind of perfume where if you're wearing a jacket or a scarf or something and you wear it again the next day, you'll put it on the next morning and it will smell strongly of this perfume. So yeah, it lasts for ages and I find that's really rare these days. The only other perfume I've had that lasts like that was Thierry Mugler's Angel when I was about 15. I don't wear that anymore, it's too sweet for me, but I, I find it hard to find perfumes that stay that long. But yeah, this one is really lovely, the bottle is amazing too. They did just bring out a new version of this though, which is not good, like way too floral for me, it made me feel really sick. This is a lot more kind of sweet. Um, yeah, so love that. 
And then I have two random favourites for the end of the video. The first one is a CD or an album because I didn't actually buy the CD, I downloaded it. Um, I've been waiting for this album to come out for absolutely ages. It's Gabrielle Aplin's English Rain album. Um, I have been a big fan of Gabrielle Aplin for about probably coming on for two years. I actually saw her live when she was like unsigned, unknown artist and she was incredible. I think at the time she was 17 or 18, really nervous. It was a tiny gig, there was probably 20, 25 people there, but she was just incredible. I went home, downloaded all of the stuff she had on iTunes and have been like obsessed with her ever since. And then at Christmas time this year, one of her cover songs was actually on an advert. She blew up and has now become like really well known, which is awesome because she seems, well, I just love her music and she seems like a nice girl as well. Um, so yeah, I was really excited for her to release her album and it didn't disappoint. Really amazing, I've been listening to it like on repeat for the last week or so since it came out. I know she's actually pretty well known in the UK, but I'm not sure how well known she is internationally. So if you haven't heard of her, definitely um, go and check her out on iTunes. The other thing I've been loving this month, I actually only discovered this two days ago, but it is a drink from Starbucks. It's the Mocha Cookie Crumble Frappuccino. Seriously, it's amazing. It tastes like frozen hot chocolate. If you've ever been to Serendipity in New York, it's that famous place where they made the film, Serendipity. It basically tastes like their frozen hot chocolate with bits of cookie in it. Honestly, like, I really want one now. I just, you know when you talk about something and it's like, oh but yeah. The mocha cookie crumble frappuccino is amazing. And if you haven't tried one, I would recommend it if you like chocolate and cookies and frozen tastiness. So yes, that is it for today's video. I hope you have all had a lovely month. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see a tour of my new room. I hope you guys like it as a background. I will see you in the next video. Bye. I like the crazy pattern on this like nice and pink and purple. And slightly like, like it's 3D. I think you have to put on 3D glasses to see it anyway. I'll start with the beauty stuff because I put it on.